Being drunk affects your five senses. Sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. I'm a psychiatric nurse practitioner specializing in addiction, and I'm gonna walk you through how alcohol affects your senses. Let me give you a disclaimer before I begin. I'm gonna only be discussing the short-term effects of alcohol. First up, sight. How does alcohol affect your sight? After a few drinks, you may notice that your vision starts to blur. You also may notice that your eyelids start to droop and feel heavy. Alcohol is a central nervous system depressant. <laughs> Normally, your nerve impulses are conducted very fast. But when you have alcohol, it goes very slowly. Let me tell you how the eye works. This is your eye and how it connects to the brain. Your eye sees the apple, it reverses the image it conducts to your brain. The optic nerve interprets what it is you're looking at. It does this in a very rapid fashion. But when you're drunk, this process can take a lot longer. Blood cells from the heart are being pumped all over the body. One of the places they're being pumped is to the brain. Those cells contain alcohol that readily crosses this blood-brain barrier. The senses are dulled. And as a result, those reflexes are much slower. So when you talk to somebody that's drunk, you may notice that they're just not tracking you and they're trying hard. The problem is they can't focus on you because those impulses that say, look here, are being conducted at a much slower rate. It'll affect your pupil's ability to constrict and dilate. The pupillary constriction and dilation is controlled by the iris. The iris gives your eye color, but it's also a muscle. So when that muscle slows down, you can't constrict and dilate. Now, why would you do that? Well, if headlights are coming at you, say when you're driving down the road, your eyes want to constrict to reduce the amount of light coming in the eye. That happens much slower. You're more easily blinded. Next up, hearing. You ever notice when people have been drinking, they start to talk a little bit louder and enunciating their words? Let me show you what your hearing looks like on a diagram. When you're sober, you normally can hear by capturing those sound waves through your outer ear, traveling through your middle ear, and along the auditory nerve, and your brain can interpret what's being said. The volume sounds reasonable, you're able to match it, and you can understand what's going on. When you've had a few drinks, well, that whole system slows way down. And so you may start to speak louder to get the other person to speak louder because the intensity and the clarity is diminished. While we're here, let's talk about alcohol and the effect on the inner ear and its effect on your balance. It's proprioception time. When you've been drinking too much, you may notice that you start to stumble or others may notice that you start to stumble. The reason that happens is because the nerve impulses conducting from the auditory nerve to the ear are slowed. So you're not getting that feedback in a timely fashion to keep your body upright. So the fluid in your inner ear is in a state of balance. It's like a level. That water bubble there, your body can pick up when it's not level and then you can really balance yourself in response. But if you're not able to perceive the bubble being off, then you're gonna fall down. Lying down makes you feel worse because now you've caused the fluids to shift again. So now you're looking for another way to garner input to the brain to let you know that you're not gonna fall over. So you may find that putting your leg on the ground will give your brain another form of input to stabilize that feeling. And this brings us to our next sense, the sense of touch. When you're sober, a frozen ice cube in your hand can only happen but for so long until you wanna get this out of your hand. When you've been drinking, an ice cube in the hand is like having a glove on. Remember, the central nervous system controls everything in your body from the brain down and from down up to the brain. Alcohol diminishes your sense of touch in the same way it diminishes all your other senses. You may have a hard time perceiving pain. The conduction of the impulse from their feet to their brain has been greatly diminished. So they may not time their steps just right. They may not lift their foot just right on the curb and as a result, fall down and injure their knee. The skin receptor from the knee to the brain may not conduct the impulse in a sufficient manner to say, hey, we're leaking blood here, you've injured yourself, you've broken the skin. And they'll continue walking because they're insensate. So you may tolerate more painful things where you would ordinarily pull your hand away. Hello, my dear. 
In the old days, before we had formal anesthesia, people would be given large amounts of ethyl alcohol, ethanol, something like a high proof, whiskey, vodka, something like that. The reason you do that is because they were gonna do something very painful to you, like pull out a tooth or amputate a limb. Well, with enough alcohol in there, the goal was that you would not conduct those painful impulses, so you would sit still for this surgery. Let's talk about how alcohol affects your genitals. So you've heard the expression whiskey dick or whiskey clit. There's a line in Macbeth about alcohol and how it provokes the desire but inhibits the performance. There's actually science behind that. What's happening is alcohol has diminished the sensation of your penis and your clitoris. And so as a result of having diminished sensation, you're not having the necessary blood flow to cause engorgement for an erection of the clitoris or the penis. The way you know you're aroused is desire and then you have an erection or you have some increased genital pressure that needs to be relieved and that's normally relieved in an orgasm, but the problem is there's no sensation. So then there's no blood flow. So then there's no orgasm. And now we're gonna talk about taste. Taste is one of the first things you'll notice about alcohol. You may notice that the more you drink, the less the taste bothers you. This is water, by the way. <laughs> when you drink alcohol, you'll have desensitization of your taste receptors. Let me show you what that looks like. When you drink, you pour alcohol directly on your tongue. And this slows down the nerves conducting from your tongue to your brain. The nerves that conduct the flavor are off your cranial nerves. Your glossopharyngeal nerve and your vagus nerve conduct the flavor from your tongue to your brain. So what creates desire for the different flavors of alcohol? Basically, it's the dopamine that's associated with it. So why do some people like really sweet things and some people like really bitter things? Different people get dopamine release for different reasons. Your sense of taste is greatly impacted by your sense of smell. When you're sniffing wine, the odor enters my nose and my olfactory nerve is able to distinguish what it is I'm smelling. So when you smell the wine, you can almost begin to taste the various components of what will be in the wine. You will hear onophiles say things like, this wine has a full bouquet with degrees of minerality and ripe fruit. The more experienced you are at smelling wine, the more you can detect just by odor alone. However, the more of this wine that you drink, the subtlety is then lost on you and you start to just say red wine or white wine. What they're doing is they're distinguishing the various molecular properties of that fermented grape that tend to remind them of those respective fruits. When you become intoxicated from drinking too much alcohol, your ability to discern those nuanced smells and flavors is greatly diminished. Let me bring out a diagram. Alcohol affects your sense of smell as it enters through the front of your nose. The odor enters here and goes into the nasopharynx. When you get congested, the blood vessels that run through the nasal passageway and through your sinuses and around the olfactory bulb become congested and engorged with blood because the smooth muscle dilation within the vessel has made the vessel bigger. So more blood can go there. That blood puts pressure on the olfactory bulb. As a result of putting pressure on the olfactory bulb, your nose becomes congested. You may even hear someone that's been drinking too much start to sound a little nasal. By the end of the night, they start sounding like this. That disgusting toilet in the dive bar, you may not smell. Those are the effects of alcohol in the short term. Some long-term effects of alcohol dependency include neuropathy, malnutrition, gastritis, and hypertension. Now, I don't want to be a total naysayer about this. There are some pleasurable things about alcohol. <laughs> but in excess, it can lead to a lot of serious complications. That's how alcohol affects your five senses on our journey with alcohol and the central nervous system.